Hi guys, in this video we're going to talk about the difference between the glycemic index and the glycemic load. I don't know if you've ever heard about this one. Probably this one, but a lot of people have not heard about this one. But there's two different factors here we want to talk about, especially when we're dealing with glycemic, which means sugar. The glycemic index um, is how fast that carbohydrate is digested or broken down into the blood and then how much power that has to raise the blood sugar, okay? And the speed at which it raises the blood sugar. Whereas the glycemic load is a little different. It's the concentrated amount of carbohydrate or the amount of carbohydrate in the food. So let me kind of give you an example. A carrot, a raw carrot, is on the glycemic index 91, right? Now, 55 or less is low, 56 to 69 is moderate, over 70 is high. So according to this scale, the carrot would be high because it's 91, okay? The glycemic load, 10 is low, or 10 or less is low, 10 to 20 is moderate, greater than 20 is high. So if you look at a raw carrot, 91 is pretty high on the glycemic index, but look at the glycemic load. It has a factor of one. So what we're doing with the glycemic load is deducting all the fiber. It's very fibrous, right? So this is not gonna influence your blood sugars nearly as much as most other foods. So let's kind of go through candy bar. Okay, a typical candy bar is 68. So that's um, borderline and pretty high. And that's a half a candy bar. Glycemic load is 23, so it's still high. Jelly beans, 78 for a one ounce amount of jelly beans. Glycemic load is 22, again, high. There's not a lot of fiber in jelly beans. Cornbread, 110, that's pretty high, that's off the charts. Um, that's 160 gram piece of cornbread. Glycemic index of 31, that's pretty high. Grape nut, okay, that's 75 for a half of a cup. Glycemic load is 31, is pretty high. You wouldn't think that grape nuts would be that high as a cereal, um, but it's pretty high. Potato, 104 for a one large potato. It's a 36 glycemic load, that's pretty high. Carrot, 91, one, so that would be fine. Look at corn, 55 on the glycemic index, but 62 on the glycemic load. So this is the worst thing you could possibly eat is corn, if, especially with related to your blood sugars. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to type down the food that you loved and ate as a child that was a carbohydrate that wasn't too good for you. Okay, mine was a combination between Reese's uh, peanut butter cups and Doritos and pizza. So what was yours? I'm curious. All right, talk to you later. Let's talk about some benefits of carrots. Uh, I haven't done a lot of videos on carrots. Um, there are some people that will say that carrots are not good on the ketogenic diet. Well, carrot juice is definitely not good on the ketogenic diet, but yes, it is high on the glycemic index. Okay, it's like 91. And the glycemic index is how fast a carbohydrate can spike your blood sugars. But don't neglect something called the glycemic load, okay? That's different than the glycemic index. Glycemic load is the concentration of carbohydrates. And so it factors in the fiber. So if the glycemic load is high, that means you have uh, very little fiber and lots of carbohydrate that can affect your blood sugars. But if the glycemic load is low, we have a lot of fiber, but it can help buffer the glycemic index, which is the spike of that sugar. So even though a carrot has a glycemic index of 91, it has a glycemic load of just one. So if you consume carrots, it's not gonna spike your blood sugars too much, especially if you don't overdo it. So a lot of that carbohydrate in carrot is fiber, which is not going to have the effect of spiking insulin. So if we combine the fiber in carrot with the glycemic index of the sugar, it buffers it out to make it uh, pretty low and keto friendly. I wouldn't actually worry about consuming carrots if you're on the ketogenic diet, if you have just a moderate amount. Now, when we talk about um, vitamin A, um, there's the active form of vitamin A called retinol, and then there's the inactive form of vitamin A, okay? Like, uh, that's part of the carotenoids that have to turn into retinol. And so when people say that, oh, I'm gonna consume some vitamin A from carrots to help me see in the dark better, it's probably not gonna happen because the amount of retinol in uh, carrots and 100 grams 
is like 852 micrograms, okay? Very, very small amounts. We compare that to 100 grams of beef liver that has 7,700 micrograms. We can see that there's a huge difference. And also the point of the conversion when you have inactive vitamin A to active vitamin A, it takes a lot of inactive to make a very small amount of active. So with the conversion of carrots, it takes like between three to 28 times the amount of this raw material, carotenoids, to be converted into the active form. That is all dependent on your zinc status, your thyroid function. If you have a low thyroid, uh, you're not going to convert that well. Uh, how healthy your liver is, if you have enough bile, and also your absorption. If you have malabsorption in your gut, you're not going to be able to convert hardly anything. Okay. However, the carotenoids like beta carotene and lutein in carrots have some other very cool properties that go beyond just supporting vision or seeing in the dark. Carotenoids from carrots can greatly inhibit the formation of developing a fatty liver. So they can inhibit fat being deposited in the liver as well as reduce the fat on the liver directly. And I'm talking about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, okay? That's a type of fatty liver that comes from, you know, consuming too many carbohydrates. All right, carotenoids also can reduce liver inflammation, which means they can also reduce the formation of fibrosis and inhibit um, cirrhosis of the liver. Now, carotenoids also inhibit insulin resistance. And we know what that does, that actually creates a fatty liver in the first place and also uh, creates kind of like a pre-diabetic situation. Carotenoids can help you uh, increase bile production and bile flow through the liver. This is why carrots and beets, by the way, are really good for the liver. Carrots have anti-cancer properties. Carrots are really good to support the eye, not necessarily in vision, but by protecting against glaucoma and cataracts. So don't be afraid to have some carrots in your diet if you're on keto. Just make sure they're a moderate amount because they can actually do some really cool things to your body. Hey, before you go, if you're benefiting from any of my content, I would love to hear about your success story. Please share it in the link down below.